thank you very much for giving me the chance to talk. And yeah, th thank you for inviting the outside world to your seminar. It's been, it's been great. I've enjoyed uh, some of the talks quite a lot. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, and also I should say thank you for coming. I know this has been a really busy week for Poisson Geometry Talks. So, um, so those of you who came out for yet another talk, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so, so this is, this is a talk about some joint work with, with Eckert that um, I think we're nearly done. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of coming from a very simple minded direction, I would say. Um, so we've been studying, we've been studying this situation where you have um, a manifold, oops, a manifold um, and a submanifold. And um, yeah, so, so ordinarily, you'll define the normal bundle. This is my notation for the normal bundle. Like this. And the normal bundle, yeah, so it's useful for studying geometry of m near n. And it kind of treats all directions, all normal directions equally, I would say. Um, and so we, we were interested in thinking about the dif differential geometry of a situation where maybe you don't want to treat all directions, all normal directions equally. You want to maybe treat some directions as having uh, greater weights, larger weights compared to other directions. Um, so, um, so, so we are studying A uh, weighted version um, uh, uh, of of kind of the usual uh, geometry that you study when you study the normal bundle. So um, also often you study, for example, Euler Euler vector fields or Euler like vector fields. Um, so yeah, we're we're studying kind of weighted versions of those things. I'll say weighted version of the normal bundle. Um, and uh, related geometry. And I'll say more precisely what I mean by weighted uh, very soon. Um, but, but basically the idea you should have in mind is um, like in coordinates, you know, you might look at Rn with coordinates um, x1 up to xn. And we want to assign these different weights. Um, so I might assign x1 a weight of w1 up to xn, a weight of wn. And these, uh, these wi should be whole numbers. And, um, and the scalar multiplication, so the scalar multiplication the kind of weighted version of scalar, scalar multipl multiplication is um, so. So the way the coordinate x i scales is by t to the power uh, w i. So here t is in uh, r. Okay, and it even makes sense for zero. I don't have to exclude zero here because I'm assuming the weight is is a whole number. Okay, so that, that, that's sort of roughly what you should have in mind when I say the word weighting, but I'll make, I'll make it more precise very, very soon. And um, yeah, and, and the idea is that, uh, yeah, in, in geometric situations where you want to treat different normal directions uh, differently as having different weights, um, uh, it, it can be useful to have kind of a weighted version of the normal bundle and weighted versions of lots of more familiar constructions. Um, and example, yeah, I don't think I'll say much about applications in this talk unless there's kind of time towards the end. Um, but um, example applications might be to normal form theorems. This was something that definitely um, motivated Eckhart. Um, so in, in particular, um, he was interested in, in um, giving a sort of new version of, of uh, the proof of the isotropic embedding theorem. Um, and uh, in that setting, he found it 
was appropriate to use uh, to use this weighted story. Um, yeah, so I probably won't say uh, another another direction uh, where there are applications is uh, to uh, hypoelliptic operators. So I probably won't say anything about this, but that's another situation where you maybe have an operator that's um, not elliptic in the traditional sense, but um, if you assign different directions, different weights, it, it becomes elliptic in some exotic sense. And yeah, so that's maybe another direction uh, where, where there, there are likely going to be applications. Okay, but, but one of the main things that, that, um, that you, you find is that um, um, there is a weighted version of the normal bundle. And my notation for this is gonna be like, uh, like this. And I think of it as kind of a non-linear non version of the normal bundle. So it's, it's a fiber bundle over N. Um, and as a space, it's diffeomorphic to the ordinary normal bundle. So I'll say it's diffeomorphic to um, the ordinary normal bundle as a space. Um, but but not canonically. Um, it has it has a scalar multiplication, so it's not it's not a vector bundle. Let me say that first. It's not a vector bundle in general. I mean, you can because it's diffeomorphic to the normal bundle. You could you could. Kind of force it to be a vector bundle by making some choice of diffeomorphism, but it's it's not naturally a vector bundle. Um, but it does it does have a weaker structure, so um, it it has uh, a scalar multiplication. And and what I mean by that is that um, it has an action. I kind of showed this in coordinates, or, or mentioned this in coordinates above, but it has an action of the um, monoid um, R with scalar multiplication. So um, if I omitted zero from the real numbers, then this would be the multiplicative group of the real numbers, but uh, I deliberately want to keep zero. So then it's, then it's not a group anymore because zero is not invertible, but it's still, it's still a monoid. Um, and you can talk about actions of monoids, just like you talk about actions of groups. The definition is, I guess, kind of immediate. And um, yeah, and, and this weighted normal bundle, so it turns out to be a fiber bundle with an action of this uh, monoid of uh, real numbers with scalar multiplication. And, and that makes it an example So it is an example of um, something called a graded bundle. I believe this terminology is due to Grabov Grabovsky, Rakievich, I'm not sure if I'm saying the name right, but yeah, so a graded bundle is, is, um, is I guess, a, a slightly broader category than the category of a vector bundle. So it's a category of fiber bundles that have an action of this multiplicative monoid of uh, real numbers. Can you tell us what the structure group is of the fiber bundle? Oh, um, yes, I think so. Um, yeah, so it should be it should be so. So the fibers, the fibers will be diffeomorphic to R, R n for some n. Maybe I should avoid n because n will probably be the ambient manifold. R k for some k. And um, but but you should think of that R k as having some scalar multiplication on it. Something that looks like this. With some weights, so you you fix some sequence of weights like this. And uh, you should look at. Um, diffeomorphisms of the fiber that uh, preserve this scalar multiplication. So it's going to be some group of 
polynomial diffeomorphisms. Okay, so it'll be a, it'll be a finite dimensional. I guess it'll be a finite dimensional Z group. Is that right? Um, yeah, of of diffeomorphisms that um, preserve this scalar multiplication. Thank you. I'm not sure I'm saying that 100% correct, but yeah, the, the the main thing, yeah, you you should you should think of this bundle as um, it, it's not just the fiber bundle, but it's a fiber bundle with this monoid action. Yeah, and so the um, the automorphisms, for example, sh you should think of bundle automorphisms that uh, preserve this monoid action. Um, right. Uh, so, so, so this was kind of, yeah, I'm going to come back to, um, to these things and explain them in more detail later, but this is just kind of a, a kind of brief glimpse of the direction I'm heading. The one, the one other thing I wanted to mention maybe before diving into definitions and so on is um, uh, other places in the literature, at least that I'm aware of, where related things appear. And this is certainly not exhaustive, but I wanted to just mention a few. Um, so, so one area would be, I would say, would be algebraic geometry. And this is something I'm not super knowledgeable about. Not, neither of us is. Um, but for example, uh, what, what I'm what I'm talking about is in the same spirit as like weighted projective spaces and things that are studied in algebraic geometry. Um, yeah, so so neither as I said, neither of us are experts in this. We kind of did a brief search um, for references and didn't didn't really find something in the same uh, degree of generality and also sort of using the kinds of coordinate free methods that that we were interested in. Um, but, but nevertheless, there's lots of work on weighted projective spaces, and that's sort of in the same spirit. Um, I thought I'd just mention that briefly. Another thing, another place that we, we learned about quite recently in the last month or so, um, but um, there are some old uh, unpublished notes by um, Richard Melrose, where he introduces something that he calls um, a quasi-homogeneous Quasi homogeneous structure. Oops. And this is, this turns out to be the same as what, what we are calling a weighting, exactly the same. Although, um, yeah, although, although it looks like there's very little overlap in what we do and what, what he did. Um, so he, he kind of went in, so, so the initial definition is going to be equivalent to what. Uh, Melrose wrote down what, what Melrose calls quasi-homogeneous structure, but um, but he kind of went in a different direction. So so I'm going to be kind of explaining um, how to think about weightings in terms of jet bundles and things like that. Um, that's kind of the direction I'm heading in. Uh, and Richard Richard Melrose in this work uh, sort of went in a different direction. So so although it's the same thing, there's there's not really overlap in what in, in what we do. Um, apart from the original definition, I would say. Um, and another another place in the literature that um, sort of resonates with what we do is um, there's lots of literature on hygroelliptic operators. Um, and I, I could also mention like sub-Riemannian geometry as well. Um, yeah, I guess I already mentioned briefly wh why this might be relevant in, in that area. You, you, you might want to consider certain operators as being um, elliptic in some more exotic weighted sense, um, even though they're not elliptic in the traditional sense. Um, so yeah, so yeah, here I think there are lots of people. Um, so some of the references that we read uh, related to this would would include people like Raphael Ponge and Nigel Hickson, who was my mentor um, up until about a month ago. And uh, Jacobo Sandrilidakis is, is working with collaborators in this direction. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there's also lots of older work too, um, on contact manifolds, things like this. Um, so I won't really say much about this, but this is, this is another place where, where similar ideas are, are being, or related ideas at least. Okay, so Yanis, maybe before you go on, there is, was a question in the chat, I think, when you were discussing about uh, graded vector bundles. 
asking ah. uh, vector bundles filter by sub vector bundles entering this idea. And then there is also an answer that uh, I don't know if you uh, if you read it yourself, uh, and then you want to comment. Uh, Oh, I, I agree with the answer okay. from Luca. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So what? Yeah, what, one of the things, one of the nice properties of these graded bundles is yeah, they always come in these kind of towers of affine bundles. I don't know if I'll actually explain that, but um, yeah, that, that that's one nice nice feature. Okay. Um, yeah. So thank thank you, Luca. Okay, so yeah, so I guess, yeah, I was going to kind of um, go into more detailed stuff now, definitions and so on. Um, so, so maybe I'll call this section section two or something. Um, weightings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, fix a weight sequence. By weight sequence, I mean just a sequence of whole numbers, um, W1, W2, to Wn. N is going to be the dimension of the manifold in, in the end. I'm also going to write R for this, for this highest weight, for this largest uh, element in the weight sequence. And maybe another piece of useful notation, I'm going to write W for the vector of, of weights. So, so these should be whole numbers. So th these are going to end up being the weights of the different coordinates in, in local coordinate charts. And um, if u is a subset of Rn, I'm going to define these ideals, c infinity u sub i, you see define ideals. Uh, it's going to be the ideal generated by monomials that look like x to the s. This is going to be kind of a multi-index notation. So this is x1 to the s1, dot, 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 xn to the xsn, where um, s dot product with w is bigger than or equal to i. So s, yeah, so s, s is this uh, vector. Um, of powers, the, the s, the s sub i. Let me write a little bit more. So this, by this I mean the ideal generated by, generated by these monomials. And um, these s sub j's are um, in uh, our whole numbers. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just taking monomials that have a certain degree but in this kind of weighted sense, yeah? Um, so if you, if you took this weight vector, if you took this weight vector to consist of just all ones, all weight one, then this would be the degree of them, then this i would be the degree of the monomial in the ordinary sense. Um, but because I'm using this uh, vector of weights, uh, this is kind of a weighted, weighted notion of degree. Okay, maybe, maybe actually I'll, I'll right away give an example, a couple of examples. So, um, for example, example one is going to be kind of the the boring example. So if you you you, you could take um, what I was just saying, you could take the weight vector to be all all ones. So all the weights are one, and then um, this c infinity u sub i is going to be um, the ideal of uh, smooth functions uh, vanishing at the origin uh, to degree i in the ordinary sense. Another way I could write this is I could say that it's the ideal, um, let's call it i sub sub zero to the power i, where i sub zero is uh, the vanishing ideal. 
of the origin. Yeah, so it's sums of products of things of, yeah, sums of uh, products of like uh, I things, each of, each of which vanishes at the origin. Is that, are there any questions about, about that so far? Th this is kind of the, the boring example, I would say. Like if you take all the weights to be one, then this, is, this just corresponds to ordinary vanishing degree. Okay, I, I could take, let me do a closely related example. So I could take some of the weights to be zero. Like let's say, let's say I, I took this uh, vector. So now I'm taking, I'm, I'm taking x1, the variable x1 to have weight zero. Okay, so then, then we get something very similar. Um, so C infinity ui will be um, ideal of uh, functions. Um, vanishing, um, not at the origin anymore, but on a, um, on a uh, line. So it's so a vanishing on the uh, x1 coordinate axis uh, to degree i in the ordinary sense. Yeah, so the, the coordinates that are of weight zero, um, so, so, so maybe you can see where I'm going. So the, the, these, these open subsets u of Rn will be like, are gonna end up being like coordinate charts in, in our manifold. And the coordinates of weight zero are gonna correspond to coordinates on the submanifold. And then there are gonna be coordinates for the directions normal to the submanifold that will end up having different weights. Um, okay. Maybe a third example, let me do something more interesting with the weights now. So let's say, um, let, let's say I took the weight factor um, one comma two. I'm, I'm taking n equals two here. Okay, so now x1 is gonna have weight one, and x2 will have weight two. And then, yeah, so let's think about what these, these look like. Or let, let me just do for. Let me just do do it for the whole space. So uh, the first the first one of these will be the ideal generated by x one and x two. So it's again um, so no, nothing unusual happens at the first at the first step. This is the ideal of functions uh, vanishing at the origin again. Yeah, that this is kind of a general feature. This first, this first um, ideal will always be functions vanishing on the subspace um, whose coordinates are the variables of weight zero. Um, I could look at the, the next step. So if you look at the definition, this should be generated by x1 squared and uh, x2. I go to the next step, you'll get, let's see, x1 cubed. Um, you need to make all combinations that sort of have degree three, but in the weighted sense. Yeah, so x1, x2 has degree three in the weighted sense. And then, okay, for, to complete the set, I have to put in something of, of weight four as well. And then, um, yeah, and then you kind of keep going. Maybe I'll do one more. So now I should write down all things that have kind of degree four, but in the weighted sense. So I have x1 to the four. Um, I could have x1 squared x2. And I guess I could have x2 squared again. Okay, so this is this is some different, different descending sequence of ideals. Um, so the ideals are getting smaller and smaller as i increases. Um, 
And yeah, this is some different descending sequence. It's not, it's not the same as the standard notion of vanishing order at origin. OK, um, so let's, let's pass now to manifolds. So here's the definition. So th this is going to be kind of the local coordinate model. Um, but yeah, so I can pass the manifold. So uh, an order R. So R, R remember, R is going to always be the letter for the um, largest weight that appears in the weight sequence. So an order R weighting. on a uh, manifold M is, um, is a, a descending sequence of, um, so I'm going to use the kind of sheaf language a little bit. Um, because I'm working in the smooth context, it doesn't, doesn't really make a difference. Um, but, but here, maybe I'll just use the sheaf language. The sheaf language is good if you want to do things in the holomorphic setting, for example. Um, so it's a descending sequences, a sequence of um, ideal sheaves. So the first one is just going to be the ideal of, um, the ideal of all, sorry, the sheaf of all smooth functions. So that's my C infinity M zero. This is um, sheaf of smooth functions. And then I'm assuming that there's some descending sequence like this. Okay. Um, such that locally it has the form I talked about above. So um, such that uh, locally, so around any point, there is a chart, um, a coordinate chart U, um, so that the filtration, the restriction of the of this um, descending sequence of ideals is is of the form above. Um, you such that um, uh, let, yeah I, I, I guess I should say such that um, the restriction yeah so the the induced uh, the, the induced filtration that you sorry I keep saying filtration the induced descending sequence that you get on um, C infinity M U Yeah, so I'm applying these sheaves to this open subset U. Um, uh, sorry, it's not quite a complete sentence. How can I write this? Such, such that the restricted um, uh, sequence of ideals okay, so I equals zero, one uh, is of the above form. Okay, is, is that is that somewhat clear? You want the same set of weights in every chart? Um, not not necessarily, no. Um, because because my. Okay, yeah. Let, let me maybe say one 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 more thing. So, um, I guess a remark is that, um, yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically, what what you should have in mind is. So, so it follows from this coordinate description that this C infinity M1 is um, the, the sheaf of uh, functions vanishing on some submanifold. The submanifold N in M. Okay, um, but you could you could have a point that's sort of far away from this submanifold where the chart is not uh, where where this open chart U is not intersecting the submanifold at all, and and then you would um, and then I guess you would what do you do? I guess all your weights are zero 
for, for that case. Um, yeah, but 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 for the most part, we're we're interested in what's happening near near this submanifold, near this. So 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 it automatically follows from the coordinate description that this C infinity m one it is the vanishing um, is the vanishing ideal sheaf of some submanifold. And uh, that that's really what we're interested in, in in what's happening near near the end. I mean, you could I guess you could also have a situation where n has more than one component, and you have different weight sequences near each component, something like that. That's also allowed. Um, yeah. So so I think that's all consistent with the definition. Actually, let me because it's going to. I think it will come up a couple of times. Let, let me give this another name. I'll call this I n for the uh, vanishing ideal of this submanifold. Yeah. So so w w weightings always kind of look the same in, in this first degree. This first um, this first ideal is always the vanishing uh, the vanishing ideal sheaf of some submanifold. Um, it's sort of in the higher degrees that that things can get uh, more interesting, more complicated. Okay, so so maybe um, an example, a simple example would be um, kind of the boring standard example would be uh, when this C infinity m i is just the ith power of the vanishing ideal of some sub manifold. This would this corresponds to um, uh, a kind of standard weighting, standard or, or uh, trivial weighting. Okay, but then um, this example, maybe I won't write it out again, but this, this example up here of R2, um, maybe I can just kind of uh, annotate this. So, so in, in this example with R2, um, my submanifold n is just the origin in R2. And um, yeah, and, and this is my sequence of, of ideals, uh, my descending sequence of ideals. And it's not, yeah, so this is an example where it's not uh, the standard. So this is not um, the standard um, example. Yeah, so so this this original ideal is 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 uh, just the vanishing ideal of the origin, but the higher ones are are different, start to be different. Okay. Um, so actually, there was one more thing I wanted to say about that example. Sorry for flying around so much. Um, so one one way you can tell you can distinguish uh, different uh, sequences of this of this sort descending sequences of ideals is by um, keeping track of which variables survive and and how long. Um, so for example, he, here uh, we see that um, the coordinate variable x two survives to the second stage. Um, so that, that that's really what makes it different from the standard weighting, where all the weights are one. Is that this uh, second coordinate variable survived to the second ideal? So, in, so in general, you can keep track of like which coordinates survive and how long as, as you descend down this sequence of ideals. That's one way of telling telling these things apart. And um, if you do that, it it gives you um, it gives you it ends up giving you a filtration of the normal bundle to the submanifold. Um, so, so by looking. Let me write by looking at um, which variables survive and for how long, which coordinate variables survive and how long, um, we get a filtration of uh, the normal bundle to the submanifold. So more precisely, what do I mean by that? Um, so we can look at this quotient. We can look at the ith one of these ideals um, and take the quotient by uh, that part of the ith ideal that 
vanishes to second order. So these are like th these are like the things in the ith ideal that um, that aren't coordinates anymore. You know, they're, they're things like squares of coordinates or products of coordinates. Okay, so you can look at you can look at this quotient. It's um, it's contained in in this quotient in i n mod i n. Oh, I should have said should have said let i be greater than or equal to one. So it's contained in in this quotient. Um, uh, because i is greater than or equal to one. And, and this thing is, um, th this particular quotient of ideal sheaves is uh, canonically isomorphic to sections, the sheaf of sections of uh, the dual of the normal bundle. So I'll write it like, like, like that. Um, basically by, by taking differentials. So if you, have, if you have a function that vanishes along n, you can take its, um, you can take its normal derivative and that will give you um, that will give you uh, something in uh, that will give you a section of the dual of the normal bundle. Yeah, you can pair that with a with a vector in the normal bundle um, to get the derivative of the function normal to the manifold. Okay, so so what this means is that uh, oh yeah, so, so so what this means is that this this is. Um, again, you can show this using the coordinate description. So, so this this is the um, sheaf of sections of um, a subbundle. Of uh, U M N star, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give this. I'm going to give this subbundle a name. I'm going to call it the annihilator because really, really, I want I want uh, I want to define the subbundle of the normal bundle. So I'm going to call it the annihilator of f sub minus i plus one. Okay, so so the in, the index is just sort of a convention. I'll I'll explain maybe the conventions a little bit a little bit later. But um, yeah, so 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 this this defines. This defines a subbundle um, f minus i plus one of the normal bundle. Okay, I I'm saying I'm saying that whatever this subbundle is, I want its annihilator. Maybe I should have written that as a annihilator. I want its annihilator to be. Um, I want the sheaf of sections of its annihilator to be to be this thing. Okay, what what does this mean intuitively? So basically, you should think of um, think of uh, so um, write this properly. So. Uh, th this ends up being a, a, a filtration like this. So this this will be the whole no normal bundle. Uh, R is this maximal weight that I mentioned before. Um, F minus one. F zero is, is just n, the zero rank zero bundle over n. Bas basically, you should think of F. Um, F minus one as the directions in the normal bundle that have weight one, F minus, sorry, less than or equal to one, F minus two should be directions having weight less than or equal to two, um, and so on. So um, maybe I'll say F, basically think of F minus one as um, directions, normal directions with weight uh, less than or equal to I. The reason the reason I'm using negative indices, which looks probably looks really weird um, first time you see it, is is basically because we dualize. So, so I want my coordinates to have positive weights, and then uh, coordinate derivatives will be like you know. So if if x sub j has weight 
um, three or something, um, or I guess I introduced the notation, I called the weight wj. If x sub j has weight wj, then the, this coordinate dif differential, um, we're assigning it, uh, what we're kind of thinking of it is having weight uh, minus wj. Um, I, it, yeah, it, it makes sense if you're thinking in terms of scalar multiplication. If you multiply xj by t to the wj, then uh, d by dxj should get multiplied by t to the minus wj. Yeah, so so that's that's just the reason we're using negative negative indices. That's, that's all. It's just our convention. Um, okay, so you, you always have um, so if you have a weighting, if you have this descending sequence of ideals. Um, you always get this filtration of the normal bundle like this. Um, and, and this can be used to distinguish different, different weightings, uh, but, but it's not a complete invariant, I should say. So a weighting contains a little bit more information than, than this filtration of the normal bundle. It, it's kind of difficult to say exactly what additional information it contains. And, and that's, that, that, that was a big part of, I guess, what we were thinking about. Um, so I'm going to, let's see, how am I doing for time? I guess I should, should probably speed up a little bit. Um, right, so. Actually, don't worry, I mean, if, we, if you go over time five minutes here, it's a very informal seminar, so. <laughs> okay, okay, I can, I can also sort of stop at some point and, sure, sure. and allow questions and so on. Um, yeah, so, yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and tell you, yeah, so I, I can already tell you at least an algebraic description of what this weighted normal bundle is. Um, so, so let me just write that down right away. Um, and yeah, Eckert and I didn't find this description totally satisfactory, um, which is maybe part of the reason for this project, but at least the kind of initial, initial definition I can tell you right away. So the weighted normal bundle, given, given the data of this weighting above, the weighted normal bundle, you can realize it basically as spec of some algebra. Another way to say that is I'm looking at, I'm looking at the set of algebra homomorphisms from um, the associated graded of C infinity of M. So C infinity of M has this filtration, this descending filtration by ideals. I can take the associated graded of that, that's some, that's some new algebra. And I can look at algebra homomorphisms from that to the real numbers. Okay, so this is this is um, this is with respect to uh, this this filtration, this descending filtration. Um, that that's part of the definition of a weighting. Okay, so it's like it's like the max spec of of some ring, if you like. Um, and in the standard case, this is this is true. Yeah. So, um, so, so I guess remark is that um, for the standard weighting, the standard weighting where all the coordinates have weighting weight weight one. Yeah. And this ideal, the ith ideal is just the ith power of the vanishing ideal of the submanifold. So for the standard weighting, um, th this agrees. This is the ordinary normal bundle. Uh, Tn restricted to n mod Tn. Okay, and, and basically how it works out is is that um, uh, the um, the elements of let's say C infinity m i of c infinity m i plus one. Um, so, so this part of the associated graded will, will end up becoming uh, functions on the total space of the normal bundle that uh, are polynomial of degree i along the fibers of the normal bundle. That, that's what this, this kind of piece of the associated graded um, ends, up, ends up representing. Yeah, so so this yeah so, so so this is now the general definition it applies to to more more general weightings but in the ordinary case it reduces to, to what we know 
and so yeah so one of our big questions was um whether there's so maybe i'll write this down so one of our big questions was is there a description uh, um, a kind of more geometric description like like this one this one in terms of quotient uh quotient of tm restricted to n by tn um in, in the general case so we're kind of differential more differential geometers we we weren't super fond of this description. It's kind of hard to read off geometric properties and so on. Um, and, we, and we'd really like a description that's more analogous to this. Um, and and uh, I guess our answer is yes, uh, using uh, jet bundles. So yeah, so now I'm going to kind of do an aside about um, jet bundles. Um, or at least the ones that are relevant for for us, and then um, yeah. So I'll explain the properties of jet bundles that we need, and then I'll come back to um, describe the weighted normal bundle in in those terms and weightings in general in those terms. Um, okay. Um, so yeah. So a little bit of notation. So I'm going to write T sub R M for um, and I'll probably call it the Rth tangent bundle for jets, R jets of paths from the real line to the manifold. So these are, um, yeah, so these are equivalence cl classes of curves in the manifold um, where, where the equivalence relation is to, to degree, uh, yeah, Rth, Rth order tangency. Um, So I think I think probably in this seminar I don't need to say a whole lot more of that or more about that, um, but but for example t t one m is just the ordinary tangent bundle. If you if you know the description of the tangent bundle in terms of equival equivalence classes of curves, um, then this just boils down to the ordinary ordinary tangent bundle. And then for higher r we're talking about um, yeah we're we're talking about keeping more information about the curves a higher higher jet of the curve. Okay, and um, one nice fact is that um, this TRM has an algebraic description. So it's the same thing, canonically the same thing as algebra homomorphisms from C infinity M to um, an algebra that I'm going to call A sub R. A sub R is a truncated polynomial ring. So you take polynomials in some variable that I'm going to call epsilon and mod out by epsilon to the power r plus one. Okay, so it's, I think, I think probably a lot of you will have seen at least the case r equals one, in which case this is, this is often how algebraic geometers would define the tangent, the ordinary tangent bundle. They would say algebra homomorphisms from the ring in question to, um, to this truncated polynomial ring. Okay, but but it works it works sort of more generally. So the the correspondence between these two dis different descriptions is quite is quite easy. So if you have a jet, an equivalence class of a curve here, then the corresponding algebra homomorphism. I'm usually going to write these algebra homomorphisms as 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 u. So I'll call this u sub gamma. So what what this homomorphism does? It sends a function to it's rth order Taylor polynomial along the curve. So it sends it to, to make this very explicit, it sends this to um, this polynomial. Uh, to the power i. Okay, yeah. So if you have if you have um, an R jet presented to you as an equivalence class of some curve gamma in the manifold, um, then you get this homomorphism where that, that maps a function to um, its Rth order Taylor polynomial uh, along that curve along that curve. Okay, so that's uh, that's how you go back and forth between these two um, descriptions of the Rth tangent bundle. Okay, and the Rth tangent bundle has 
has a lot of uh, structure. Um, I'm going to mention some of the structure it has. Um, and I'm going to mostly use this algebraic description because it's quite quite convenient for um, describing all of these structures. So, oops, uh, sorry, click something strange. So, so I'm going to um, describe a whole bunch of uh, structures on the Earth tangent bundle for you. So, first structure is um, it has an action of um, automorphisms of this algebra AR. Okay, this is kind of clear from the um, from the algebraic description because, yeah, if you have a homomorphism into this algebra AR, you can compose it with an automorphism of, of the algebra and get a new homomorphism. Okay, and, and this corresponds to um, reparameterizations. If you think in terms of curves, This corresponds to reparameterizations of, of curves. So there's a group of reparameterizations that, that acts naturally on this earth tangent bundle. And actually, you, you can a little bit more acts. So you can, th this is contained inside of just endomorphisms. And um, this thing, I'm going to maybe give a name. I'm not sure if I'll use it. I'll call it lambda r. This is a monoid. And, and this monoid acts. Okay, so it, you have a little bit more than just reparameterizations. You can also consider these kind of non-invertible reparameterizations, if, if you want to call it that. Um, and this this monoid, this monoid contains um, contains a sub monoid, so called lambda one, which is just our this monoid of real numbers with scalar multiplication. So real numbers including zero with scalar multiplication. So in particular, what this means is that um, TRM is an example of one of these graded bundles that I mentioned much earlier. So it's a graded bundle in the sense of um, uh, Grabowski, Rakievich. Yeah, so the, remember, the fiber, this means in particular the fibers are diffeomorphic to vector spaces, but not, not canonically. Um, and they have this scalar multiplication, which in this case, um, is reparameterizing curves by uh, scalar multiplication. Okay. Um, okay, right. So I'm kind of listing different structures. So that's one structure. Um, here's another structure. There's a kind of tautological map. Um, going from C infinity of M to smooth functions on the jet bundle, tensor product with this algebra. Let me, let me write this, this algebraic description again. Um, okay, th this is kind of the algebraic description. I'm just kind of reminding you what it was. Um, right, yeah, so, so what does this map do? So if you have a function on M, you just uh, evaluate it on one of these algebra homomorphisms and you get something in uh, AR. So, so explicitly what this does, if you have a function in on M, a smooth function on M, and you have a point in U, or sorry, a point in TRM, uh, you can take that to um, U evaluated on F and this will be an AR. Yeah, so here, here U, U is always going to be my notation for points of, of TRN. Yeah, so U, U is an algebra homomorphism um, from C infinity of M to AR, so, you, so it makes sense to evaluate it on F. Yeah, so it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of the usual uh, switch that, that you can do. Um, Right. Yeah. So, so, so using this map, you can you can generate all sorts of, for example, by taking components of different powers of epsilon um, in AR, you can get all sorts of functions on the uh, earth tangent bundle. In particular, you can generate coordinates on the earth tangent bundle in this way. Um, and okay. Yeah. And this somehow it took longer than than I thought it would. Um, 
maybe I should, maybe I should skip some of this stuff. Um, okay, let, let me mention one more. Uh, yeah, I really need two more things. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah, th there's, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think I can, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to skip something, but uh, let's see. Yeah, another thing I wanted to mention is that, um, okay, now it's getting a little bit abstract, but um, yeah, so if, if you use this algebraic description up here, uh, you, you can write down a similar algebraic description for the tangent bundle to the earth jet bundle. Um, so, so if you look at T, let's say it's on point U, of TRM. Um, this will be uh, derivations. Um, maybe I'll put a subscript U from C infinity of M to AR. So this is kind of a general thing. If you have a space of algebra homomorphisms and you want to deform one of them a little bit, the kind of first order deformation will be a derivation. Um, and the subscript U means that um, I'm looking at derivations, derivations D from C infinity of M to AR, um, and, and by derivation, I mean it satisfies, uh, it satisfies this, CF of G plus UF of DG. Yeah, so it's kind of a, satisfies the Leibniz rule where you use U, um, you, you evaluate the, the functions with U. Okay, and, and using this description, um, we get that the, um, the tangent spaces um, are not just uh, vector spaces, but they're actually a, a R modules. Because, yeah, because if you have a derivation like this going into A sub R, then it makes sense to multiply it by some element of A sub R. Okay, so that's uh, yet another piece of structure. Okay, and um, I guess I should be starting to wrap up. I'm sorry, I didn't get through as much as, as uh, I wanted. Yeah, but... don't worry, it, it, uh, because we started five minutes later, but uh, you, you can also go further five minutes over time. Like we are enjoying the story. So yeah, we, want to, <laughs> we would like to see until the end and not uh, <laughs> to cut it. Okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll still, I'll, still um, I'll, I'll try to wrap up uh, in, in not too much time. I'll, I'll at least, I at least want to say though, um, how you describe weightings in these terms and the weighted normal bundle in these terms. I don't think that was too long. So, um, yeah, so, so, so here, here, here is kind of our description of weightings in terms of jet bundles. This is, I guess, one of the main things that, that we were excited about. Um, so if you have an order R weighting, I'm going to describe briefly how you go uh, back and forth between the two. So, so an order R weighting on M, right, that's given in terms of this sequence of ideals, basically. Um, you can use this to cook up a sub-bundle um, that I'm going to call Q of TRM along, along N. And how you do this, given a weighting how you do this, you set Q to be the set of uh, points U in the earth tangent bundle such that um, uh, when you evaluate it on a function, you land in, oh, can I have two epsilons beside each other here? Hopefully that's okay. So this is like element of, and the other one is my epsilon. Sorry about that. Um, for all f in infinity mi, and for all i. Okay, so if you if you have a sequence of of a descending sequence of ideals like this, defining a weighting, you can cook up a bundle in this way. Um, how you should think of this in terms of paths is you're only looking at equivalence classes of paths such that when you take the functions that you want to think of as vanishing to order i on the submanifold, 
and you restrict it to one of those paths, it really does vanish to order i along that path, if that, if that makes sense. So, so really, with the weighting, you, you, you kind of want to think of these functions over here as vanishing to order i on the submanifold. So what we're doing is basically restricting to a subset of the paths approaching the submanifold, um, where along which these functions do vanish to order i. That, that's how you think about it in terms of paths. So this is yeah. So this is how you go from an order r weighting to a sub bundle of this jet bundle, and you can also go in the opposite direction. So if you have if you have a suitable sub sub bundle, then um, let me make that a little bit shorter. I think I need a little bit more space. Um, then you can reconstruct these ideals by saying that uh, this is the set of functions such that um, when you take this uh, lift, so this, this TRF with this uh, kind of tautological map, and you restrict it to Q, and you restrict it to this set bundle, it, it's order I. So it's in C infinity Q tensor, I didn't leave myself quite enough space, sorry, tensor uh, epsilon to the I, AR. Okay, so if you remember, um, yeah, so, so if you remember this T, TR was a map from this kind of a lift map, this kind of topological map. Um, yeah, basically what TR does is it, it, it takes a function and lifts it to a function that gives you to, to a function on the jet bundle that gives you, it's kind of like a universal Taylor polynomial. It tells you all the Taylor polynomials along all, all curves. Um, yeah, so, so this is the way you kind of recover these ideals from such a bundle. So, so these end up being, um, being equivalent objects. If, if someone gives you a weighting, this descending sequence of ideals, it's equivalent to giving this, this sub-bundle. Either one, you can recover the other. Presumably not just any old sub-bundle. Ah, yeah. That, so that's an excellent question. So, so actually, yeah, what, what we spent kind of the most time on that I probably don't have a whole lot of time to tell you about is, um, yeah, we, we were very interested in seeing which, which sub-bundles actually give you weightings. So if, so if you have a sub-bundle of the right kind, then this story uh, works. Um, but yeah, but, but yeah, certainly not every sub-bundle works. So, so one of our big theorems, which I can't, I probably don't have time to explain, but one of our big theorems is we worked out the characterization of which subbundles come from weightings. Um, so maybe, maybe I'll maybe I'll let someone ask a question about that if they if they want to. Um, I, I think the the last thing I wanted to mention is how you would define um, how you define the weighted normal bundle in these terms. Um, so I want one of our goals was to to define the weighted normal bundle, um, to give a description of the weighted normal bundle analogous to this TM restricted to N, restricted to N mod TN. And we have something like that. Um, so what you can do is, so we have this sub bundle of, of TRM. You can look at its, its tangent bundle. And um, its invariant under uh, this, this AR uh, module structure. So this, this is actually one of, one of the necessary conditions of, for this sub-bundle to, um, to come from a weighting. It has to be invariant under this AR module structure. So this is the, the structure I mentioned briefly up here. Yeah, this structure that you have on the tangent bundle. It, the tangent spaces are not just vector spaces, but they're these AR modules. And so what you can do is you can look at um, epsilon TQ. This will be some sub-bundle of TQ. And it's integrable. Um, so you get a foliation, uh, which maybe I'll call F epsilon TQ of Q. And the weighted normal bundle is the leaf space. Yeah, so. Um, Uh, 
So it's canonically isomorphic to this quotient. Okay, so this, yeah, and if, if the weighting is the standard weighting, this, this reduces to the ordinary, ordinary description. Q is Tm restricted to n, and this foliation ends up being um, Tn, basically, the, the, the leaves given by the action of Tn. And um, yeah, and I think maybe this is, this is a good place to stop. But, yeah, so, so, so I'll say thank you. <laughs>